Hey everybody, this is Jacob Belgum, aka Schwab Cards on Instagram. I'm a sports card collector, among other things. Alright guys, so as the title indicates, today's video is about why I use eBay consignment and why I believe it's a good idea for you to consider doing so as well. I'm going to go through a list of reasons uh, as to why I believe that eBay consignment is a good idea and I uh, hope you enjoy. Alright, so reason number one, I value my time. So, <laughs> And this is probably the most important reason. And if you value yours, uh, you should consider eBay consignment. Uh, if I was, I have a certain methodology for listing items on eBay or my slabs. I mostly do eBay these days. It's just, it just gets more eyeballs. Uh, and I have it pretty much down to a science and it still takes me hours and hours to list 30, 40 cards. Uh, whereas for consignment, you quite literally pack up uh, the items, one shipment, ship it off, and the consigner does all the work for you. They give you a PayPal or bank deposit five, six weeks later. It's that easy, guys. So you, you have to wait a little more time to get your money, but if you value your time on the front end, it's well worth it. Think about all the times you have to drive to the, uh, <laughs> to the, to the post office just to drop things off, printing labels, packaging, Guys, you do it once in this instance. I I can't express how, how valuable that is, guys. Unless you're doing this as a full-time job where you can have other things going on, you can pay someone to do your eBay processing, that can make some sense, having an eBay store. Consignment's just the way to go, guys. And I'll, I'm going to explain in another video the benefits of ComC, uh, a really key... Uh, consigner in their own right, especially because they put cards on eBay for you, uh, and another huge benefit. But an eBay consigner, you just find one you like, ship them the cards, they handle everything. I cannot express how much of a time save that is, a stress save that is. You're not dealing with the whiny customer wanting a return. You're not dealing with, hey, can I get a pick of the back, bro? It's kind of blurry. Uh, you know, is it PSA 10? Is it Jim Mid? You're just not dealing with that crap, guys. And just seeing those eBay messages come up every day, it's just such an annoyance. And it takes my focus away from things I could be doing, you know, better with my life, like making YouTube videos that get 100 views. <laughs> but yeah, that's key, guys. I value my time. I hope that you guys do too. And that's the biggest reason I use eBay consigner. consignment. Secondly, they're incentivized to do right by you. And it's a few reasons, kind of some sub points here. Uh, for one, word of mouth advertising. You know, I, I have a following of about a little over a thousand people on Instagram, including, you know, quite a few pretty active followers. And they do value my opinion. Uh, I think justifiably so. I've been in this game a long time. I've done pretty well for myself. I've built a pretty cool collection. So when they ask me who I can sign with, I let them know. And I would let you know right now if they agreed to do an ad on this show, which they did not. They gave me the cold shoulder on Instagram. So guys, maybe next time, maybe you'll regret that. What an idiot. Oh, what a loser. Good, good. But you made your bed, you're gonna have to lie in it. No free ads, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, but word of mouth still matters. Uh, People on Instagram will follow me if you ask me, apart from this video, I'll tell you. Uh, they, they offer a really good service, but they didn't want to pay for advertising, so I'm not going to give it to them. What can I tell you? I value my time, I value my worth. So, uh, and a, Another reason they're incentivized to do right by you is sales prices. This one is less of a factor, but the better their listing, uh, the better time they put it in, the more they'll sell it for, the bigger fee they'll get off my cart. That's a little less important. It's kind of like how a realtor, you might think, oh, well, they're working for me. They want to have the best sale price possible. Not quite, guys. They want to cycle through inventory as much as possible because the difference between 5% of 300,000 and 5% of 325,000, it's not that much. It's not as much as what you're getting. And it's the same way here. So it's not that big of a deal, but it does matter. And that goes back to the word of mouth. If, if everything you're selling through them is going under comps, you're going to wonder, hey, what am I paying for here? So th they do want to get you a good sales price. Uh, so so those are a couple of reasons. Um, and then you, you don't want to, and in terms of not ripping you off, you don't want to end up on blowout on card porn for ripping somebody off. I mean, if you're big enough, if you're Probstein, you can survive it, no problem. 
But uh, if, if you're a small small potato guy trying to make your name in the consignment business, a uh, little less known, not quite as much uh, notoriety for good or for ill, one, one rip off, one bad story could take you down. So those are all the reasons, guys. They want to do right by you. They're not trying to screw you over like it sometimes feels like eBay is trying to do. Uh, the consigner himself or herself, I guess, is, uh, is trying to do the right thing. Uh, my third reason, guys, the fees are so low. I cannot express this to you guys enough. Like you might think, oh, well, if they're selling it on my behalf, you know, they're gonna take a huge cut. I'll just sell it myself and save the money. Guys, if you're selling at shows, people want everything at 90%, 85, 80, 75% of comps anyway. You're not saving that much there. Oh, I'll list it myself on eBay. They're still taking their 13, 13 and a half percent. I've been thinking about something. Yeah, so have ah. I. I don't think the deal is fair. You don't think it's no, fair? No, no, no. I found the place. I set the whole thing up. I'm doing all the legwork. What? Legwork. Oh, there's legwork. If anything, you're getting too much. <laughs> too much? That's right. They're my coats. Okay, look, I want 35%. I'm thinking more like 15. No way I've taken 15. Well, you're not getting 35. All right, let's compromise. 25%. Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> You still have to, you know, pay your shipping if you want to have free shipping, what have you. Guys, the consigner I work with, for every sale that sell, for every item that sells over 10 bucks, they're, they're taking 15%. You keep 85% if it's over 10 bucks. If it's over 100, they're taking, I want to say 12%. So it's actually less than eBay. And then there are a few other brackets. Like if it gets over 500, it's even less. If you're selling for over 100 bucks, through these guys that I work with, or, or most of the other consigners, you're doing better than you are selling it yourself on eBay. I know it sounds counterintuitive, guys, if you haven't been introduced to this before, but that's how it works. Because they do so much bulk and they have agreements with eBay, I don't know how it works exactly, they still have margin by giving you this great fee structure. They still make their money from eBay. So, guys, <laughs> you're making more money. Additionally, you're getting more eyeballs. I know some buyers that will look at particular sellers for just the consistency of service, they trust them, or for the combined shipping, you're getting your, uh, your items in front of more eyeballs on those auctions than if you had it on your own site. So there's really, the, the fees, it's not an issue. If anything, you're gonna make a little more money typically uh, than listing them yourself. And that doesn't even factor in the value of your time, which people don't consider enough, I'm sorry. And then lastly, this isn't the most important one, but sometimes you can get exposure on your auctions. Like uh, if you post on your story, hey, I'm consigning with this guy, look at all my auctions. Sometimes they'll share that on their story to get additional eyeballs that you wouldn't get from your own story. Uh, so more exposure, lower fees, uh, <laughs> the fact that they want to do right by you due to various advertising reasons. And the biggest one, guys, you value your time. You don't want to go to a show every week to sell your stuff. You don't want to go on eBay or MySlabs or Facebook or Instagram. You're, you're spreading yourself across four platforms, listing cards. It's just not worth it, guys, if you're like me and you have a job outside of this. I'm not playing for the thrill of fucking victory here. I don't rent, alimony, child support. I play for money. My kids eat. I got stones enough not to chase cards, actions, or fucking pipe dreams. If this is just for fun, a hobby, a side hustle, whatever you want to call it, there's only 24 hours in a day, guys. And hopefully just 16, because hopefully uh, you are sleeping. Hopefully a little less than that. You're calling your mother. <laughs> you're doing the good stuff, you know? You're shopping for groceries. You're not just ordering in. So uh, that's the biggest one, guys. So uh, lastly, I want to explain the types of cards that I can sign. So I'm gonna have a video running in the background here that I'm gonna talk over, uh, that I'm gonna talk over showing off the cards that I consigned most recently. And these are ending on, uh, I wanna say the 25th of August in the year of our Lord, 2022. So if you wanna check out those auctions, you're more than welcome to, and I guess see who uh, I'm consigning with in the process. There's their advertising. <laughs> but uh, let, let, let's get this run in here and I can, I can show these off. So we got TMAC Refractor and KG 2012 Select Prism. So the key with these, uh, they're silver refractors. I know they're gonna sell for at least 10 bucks. 
And I know these cards are pretty collectible. These are the types of cards that a collector wants in their collection and multiple people will want this in their collection. So I know there will be a few bidders. This isn't just a random junk slab that someone thinks he could you know, flip for double uh, a week or two from now. These are collectible cards and therefore there will be multiple people bidding. I don't project these to go significantly under comps. Got a couple game used jersey cards, same sort of thing, especially this colossal set uh, this Derrick Rose, I know, is already over, over 50 bucks on bids with a few days left. These are the kinds of cards people want in their PC. They're game-worn. Uh, condition isn't really all that important, so they don't mind buying raw. Uh, nice jumbo cards of great players. I, I'm confident these will sell for that $10 threshold. Because with a lot of consigners, <clears throat> if it's really dinky, the sales price, then you really kind of get eaten alive with fees. It might be you only get 80% plus a dollar. Uh, off so we've got those another nice nt chris paul jersey this is already over the ten dollar threshold it's a collectible card then we got manning it's a low color parallel team color easy flawless patch easy glenn rice on card jersey easy a lot, a lot of the keys with these guys again guys they're collectible and i know they're going to sell for at least 10 bucks same with these cats i already have some on uh, on uh Com C, so I'm just kind of spreading spreading my beans here. Brady, Derrick Henry. Timing also matters too, guys. I want it, I set these off deliberately to time right before football season started. So people are ramping up, they're thinking, oh, now, now is when I buy this Derrick Henry. So when he runs for two, 2,200 yards this year, that's when I sell. I'll let you guys take the risk, guys. Uh, if these were, <laughs> frankly, uh, if these two Henry cards were in better condition, this is a really nice one too, the light blue team color. I would keep them in my PC. They're not in the greatest condition, and this select one, additionally, is actually pretty off-center, uh, left to right. You, you can't quite tell there, but there's a lot more border on the left than the right, I believe. And when it comes to rookies, guys, I want them graded, period. So same deal with the DAC here, Silver, Aaron Donald, more nice Brady, just rare, colorful stuff that I know people want in their collections or... You know, they're big brands. They think they can sell it for more. This Kyler Murray is just really thick. That's why it's not on my PC. Nice T-Mac refractor. I know that'll sell well. A couple MJs. It's self-explanatory. Those will be bid up to their fair market value. They, you're not going low on MJ numbered ultimate base. Uh, moving on here. We have the dog jumping in. Or maybe I'll cut that. <laughs> maybe I'll edit that out. And then we've got our slabs. Slabs, there's kind of a baseline for slabs. They'll always sell for, you know, at, at least almost your money back unless you're sending bull, bull, Donruss eights. So I know I'll get my 10 bucks and then I'll let the market decide, guys. And because I can move them in quantity here, I can just give them a stack of 50. It's off my plate. A few weeks later, the money's in my pocket. Perfect. One less thing to think about. Again, these are rookies. I, I know people want a Mark Jackson PSA 9 rookie. I know they want a Chris Paul. 86 Flair. Select. You know, tens of Megatron. Most of these I graded myself. Again, th these are just cards, guys. <clears throat> They're great players. They're solid grades. They're rookie cards. There's always going to be a market for them. I don't need to nickel and dime over, you know, throwing up buy an hour best offer. Just let these run. A lot of times they might sell for over comps. If someone thinks they're getting a steal without looking too closely at recent comps. That's the thing about buy an hour best offer, guys. I like to use that for more rare cards that there's a less consistent market on. I can field offers. Uh, for these more sort of relatively low end cards, they might sell for 25 bucks all day. Someone might not realize, think they're getting a deal for 35. Oh crap, I, it's happened to me so many times, guys. You know, nice cards, but I don't need them. So there they go. Sorry about my leg in the uh, photo, in the video there, if it st sticks out. So anyway, guys, that's the video for today. The theme, eBay consignment, and what it can do for you. I think it's a lot. I hope you learned a lot, and thanks for watching, guys.